Members, we are back in session. We are at file item 155. That's AB 1914. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1914 by Assembly Member Bonilla, an act relating to public post secondary education. Ms. Bonilla, you are recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I'm sure many of you remember uh, when you went to the college bookstore and started to purchase your textbooks that before you knew it, your arms were so full you could hardly carry them. Uh, not only are there uh, a lot of textbooks to carry, but the cost of textbooks for our college students has steadily been escalating. It's estimated that today a college student on average will spend $1,300 on their textbooks, uh, and that <clears throat> is a very prohibitive cost. So AB 1914 seeks to bring that cost under control by asking uh, the faculty members at our CSU and UC system to develop a policy uh, working with our students uh, around the textbook cost. Uh, first of all, it asks faculty and students to meet and develop a policy about the use of ancillary resources. Something that's become very popular today is the use of access codes. Uh, textbook companies are selling the textbook and then they say, oh, you need this extra resource in order to submit your math homework and it's going to cost you another 50 or $100. Um, the faculty is not necessarily aware of the total cost of what they're asking their students to purchase. So this bill says, please develop a policy where you're really looking at the use of, of all the ancillary uh, resources. Secondly, the bookstore will be required to tell the faculty how much all of those uh, resources will cost the student. And then finally, what we've also found is that in the uh, bookstores, what's more and more common, because many of the bookstores are actually contracted out and not run by the schools themselves, is that bookstore staff will put a highly recommended sign next to another book. And the student comes and says, oh, this is something my professor says I really need to have. But actually, it's just the bookstore staff wants to sell that uh, resource to you. And so this bill will also say that there's got to be agreement on the labeling within the bookstore so that it's very clear what's required for the course and what is not required uh, but might be, uh, put it, be putting out there for the students to purchase unnecessarily. Uh, so with that, uh, I would ask you to support this bill. The California State Student Association uh, sponsored this bill, and I believe it will help students across the state of California. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Bonilla. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tie the vote, I-64, no zero, measure passes. File item 156, AB 1930, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1930 by Assemblymember Lackey and others, an act relating to public social services. Mr. Lackey. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Speaker, members. AB 1930 establishes an advisory committee to study what employment-based benefits and protections like federal social security or Medicare are available for some of the IHSS providers, but not others. Currently, IHSS workers who care for their children or spouse are not allowed to contribute toward benefits like Social Security. These hardworking caregivers do not have access to our nation's most important programs for seniors or the uninsured. These are basic employment protections that everyone else seems to enjoy. This creates a tremendous issue if these people want to retire, or if they become disabled themselves, or if they lose their jobs. As a result, these workers cannot stop working. Out of the approximately 400,000 providers in the IHSS program, this affects roughly 20% of such providers, or 80,000 people. AB 1930 begins the conversation about what the state would need to do to rectify the situation. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Lackey. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. 
clerk will, sorry, clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. Aye, 62, no, zero, measure passes. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Joint Rule 62A to file notice requirements to allow the Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials Committee to meet and hear AB 2153, Christina Garcia, on Thursday, June, June 2nd at 9 a.m. in room 444. Without objection, that request is granted. Members, we are going to pass temporarily on file item 157. Moving to file item 158, that's AB 1972. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1972 by Assemblymember Chow and others, an act relating to veterans. Mr. Chow, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 1972 would allow disabled veterans to receive the Distinguished Veteran Pass, which allows them free lifetime entry into the state park system, regardless of whether or not they served during peacetime or wartime. Under current law, in order to qualify for this pass, one has to be a veteran of a war who has over 50% service-connected disability and honorably discharged, or who was being held captive as a prisoner of war, or was the recipient of a Congressional Medal of Honor. As the statute currently reads, veterans who become disabled when serving during peacetime are not eligible for this, for this uh, veteran pass. Veterans who become disabled regardless of whether the uh, disability occurred during a war or a training exercise should be eligible for the past because their disability occurred due to their service to our country. AB 1972 will ensure that all disabled veterans will qualify for this past to honor their services to our country. Thank you. I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Chow. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote? Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote. I 65. No zero. Measure passes. File item 159. AB 1997. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1997 by Assembly Member Mark Stone, an act relating to foster care. Mr. Stone, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 1997 is a follow-on to the continuum of care reform that we did last year, the most significant reform to the child welfare system that has been done in quite some time. A lot of this bill is cleanup on implementation of the continuum of care reform, but it also takes some significant steps in addressing some of the issues around resource families, around the foster family homes that are out there, and this is a vehicle we're using to negotiate between the Department of Social Services and health care services in California to deliver mental health services to these children as they're brought into the system. There are some significant changes in this bill. Continuum of care reform is very large and complex and will need cleanup language like this most years moving forward as we look to implementation. So I respectfully ask for your I vote. Mr. Cooley, you're recognized. Colleagues, I rise in strong support of this bill. A week and a half ago, the Select Committee on Foster Care met an outstanding afternoon hearing focused on key issues in foster care. Uh, it, it involved many of the backers of my own bill, which was in the Appropriations Committee and did not come out. But on the day we learned that, as one, the supporters of my foster care bill, we made the decision that this initiative that my colleague from Santa Cruz is carrying, work with the Department of Social Services, is vital to the well-being of foster care. It is the key bill that is moving forward and on which uh, the hopes and dreams of many kids in foster care depend. And I am proud to rise in support of it, urge uh, passage by acclamation this day. Thank you, Ms. Cooley. Seeing no additional discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote, I 69, no zero. Measure passes. We're going to pass temporarily on file item 160. Moving to file item 161, that's AB 2018 by Mr. Ridley Thomas. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2018 by Assemblymember Ridley Thomas, an act related to community colleges. Mr. Ridley Thomas. 
Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise to present AB 2018, which will require the governing body of each community college district across the state to disseminate, to disseminate already available uh, uh, training modules on the detection and reporting of child abuse to community college faculty and staff. I would respectfully request an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Lee Thomas. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tie the vote. I-73, no zero, measure passes. File item 162, AB 2029, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2029 by Assemblymember Daly and others, an act relating to timber harvesting. Mr. Daly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I rise to uh, let you know that in 2013, AB 744, a bill that uh, Assemblymember Gordon and myself uh, authored to uh, do, create forest fire prevention pilot programs. In the 16 months of that bill, uh, we effectively treated 2,100 acres. Uh, while the program is working well, there are some barriers we have identified, so we authored AB 2029, which will ensure that counties already included in the exemption are complete allow a temporary access on slopes of less than 40 percent, extend the sunset date for another five years, and increase the tree diameter by 20 to 26 inches. I work closely with members and the staff of the Natural Resources Committee um, to draft workable amendments. This bill is critical to help uh, forest management and prevention of uh, wildfire, especially with the millions of dead and dying trees in our forest. Uh, this bill has enjoyed uh, unanimous support, and I respectfully ask for an I vote. Dr. Wood, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I'm, a prou I'm proud to be a joint author of AB 2029 and rise in support of the bill. The bill ex will extend the forest fire prevention pilot program for five more years and narrowly expand harvest requirements. The program encompasses all the counties in my district and adds another valuable tool to help prevent forest fires. I respectfully ask for your high vote. Mr. Gordon, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm proud of the bipartisan effort that led to the original legislation uh, regarding these new timber harvest plans uh, and the forest thinning. The, the bill allowed landowners to strategically thin their land within specified areas without a full har harvest plan if certain criteria were met. While still relatively early in the pilot, there are indications that it is working, uh, but there's also some barriers that have limited its success. AB 2029 would make necessary fixes in response to the identified barriers and allow us to move forward to continue to combat the uh, challenge of forest fire in our state. Uh, I would respectfully join my colleagues and ask for an I vote. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. See no discussion or debate on the item. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote I-72, no zero. Measure passes. File item 163, AB 2048. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2048 by Assemblymember Gray and others, an act relating to health professions development. Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members. AB 2048 streamlines participation in the state loan repayment program by eliminating the certified eligible site application and renewal requirements for the federally qualified health centers. Members, this is a simple bill. Currently, there is a million dollars a year that comes from the federal government. Uh, to help small clinics repay uh, doctors that go out and serve our most needy in this state. Uh, the way it works now in California is these clinics have to get on a separate list and put up matching funds. That has resulted in two-thirds of our clinics and all of our districts not being able to participate in this program and not take advantage of it. This bill streamlines that process. It is a good government bill. It will help those clinics that, again, are providing the neediest services. It is an important access issue, and I would respectfully ask for your I vote today. Thank you, Ms. Gray. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote, I-69, no zero measure passes. File item 164, AB 2054, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2054 by Assemblymember Thurmond and others, and actually into public social services. Mr. Thurmond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I'm rising support uh, of AB 2054. This is a bill to help hungry children and to provide food for them at a time that is very critical 
um, in the summertime when they often don't have access to the free lunch program and they sometimes go without a healthy meal or a nutritious meal. Uh, this bill would create a special pilot called the Summer Electronic Benefits Transfer, which is essentially building on our experience of transferring uh, electronic benefits and creating this special pilot that exists in some eight states and in various tribal communities and has shown to provide great success in reducing hunger and increasing nutrition. The bill calls for us to pursue federal funding to create the pilot. I respectfully ask for your I vote in support of California's children. Thank you, Mr. Thurmond. I see no discussion or debate on the item. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote I-69, no zero measure passes. File item 165, AB 2057. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2057 by Assembly Member Mark Stone and others, and Act Elena Calfresh. Mr. Stone, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. When a victim of domestic violence leaves the abuse, abusive situation and moves into a situation with stable housing, we need to make sure that their benefits, if they're recipients of those benefits, Mike Calfresh, move with them. What this bill does is it helps protect that individual, making sure that they have priorities for being able to reestablish those benefits in a new location. And it protects them in that it ensures that they can then have access to the food for their family. Usually this is a woman, usually a woman with a, with a young family that is trying to get out from a domestic violence situation. Uh, we need to make sure that they retain benefits as, as readily as possible. That's what this bill does, and I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Seeing no discussion debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. I-67, no zero measure passes. File item 166, AB 2069. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2069 by Assembly Member Medina and Actual Land Community Colleges. Mr. Medina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 2069 recognizes that office hours are an important part of higher education and provide a valuable opportunity for students to interact with faculty outside of the classroom. Part-time faculty teach the majority of community college students, but their office hours are not reported by community colleges. Stemming from requests from students and faculty, AB 2069 would include part-time faculty office hours as a reporting requirement. This bill has received bipartisan support, and I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Medina. Seeing no discussion on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tie the vote. I-63, no zero measure passes. File item 167, AB 2090. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2090 by Assembly Member Alejo and others. An act related to transportation making an appropriation, therefore. Mr. Alejo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This bill will ensure that public transportation services remain an integral part of the state's efforts to reduce greenhouse gases from the transportation sector. Specifically, AB 2090 will allow local transit agencies experiencing a fiscal emergency to utilize funds from the Low Carbon Transit Operations Program to maintain existing public transportation services. Under current law, only transit agencies that are expanding service can access the Low Carbon Transit Operations Program funds, but this limitation punish punishes transit districts like those in my district, specifically one that was an early ally in the effort to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District has been doing the right thing for years. They have been spending every available dollar to maximize bus services while protecting the environment. Yet due to budgetary issues, they are forced this year to slash about 50% of their bus routes. This will uh, have damaging effects not only on the environment, but on underrepresented communities like Wattsville and the Pajaro Valley. I respectfully ask for your vote on this important bill. Thank you, Mr. Lejo. Senior discussion or debate on the item. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote? Clerk will close the roll, tie the vote. I-67, no zero measure passes. File item 168 is AB 2091. Clerk will read. 
Assembly Bill 2091 by Assemblymember Lopez and actually into special education. Ms. Lopez, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Today, I present AB 2091, which will provide, make sure that schools are providing the individual education plan, IP, to the parents and the language they speak between the 60-day beginning request and ensure that IP is translated by certificate translated. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Seeing no discussion debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie. The vote I-66, no zero measure passes. File item 169, AB 2099. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2099 by Assembly Member Mark Stone and others and actually in the public social services. Mr. Stone, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, what this bill does is it creates a working group to look at how we can ensure that we get water, drinking water, to the poorest families in California. We have a system that delivers individual benefits through the EBT system, and we have money in our water bonds that help communities out, broader communities out, with drinking water. What we need is to create a vehicle through that combines funding resources and the EBT delivery mechanism in such a way that individual families can have access to clean drinking water in their regions where water is an issue. That's what this bill does, create a working group to look at that, and I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Stone. Seeing no discussion on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote or desire to vote? All members vote or desire to vote? <clears throat> Clerk will close the roll tie, but I-66, no zero measure passes. File item 170. It's AB 2122. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2122 by Assembly Member McCarty and actually into teacher credentialing. Mr. McCarty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have before us a bill dealing with our teacher shortage with a focus on the teacher pipeline. In essence, this bill reenacts the former Wildman Keeley Solis Par Professional Teacher Training Act of 1997, and I will give somebody a prize who comes and tells me who were Wildman, Keeley, and Solis and what district they were from. Yes, that's one. Where's she from? Anyway, uh, this focuses on making sure that all classified employees, not just PAR professionals, have the opportunity to receive funding, to receive their teacher credential, helping address this important issue in California. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarty. I'm sorry. The Dean of the Assembly speaketh. I just wish to, I just wish to claim my prize, noting that Mr. Wildman was from the 43rd District, uh, he represented the communities of Glendale, Burbank, and Los Angeles. So thank you. Keeley? <laughs> that would be Santa Cruz. Thank you, Mr. McCarty. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie. The vote I-67, no zero. The measure passes. File item 171, AB 2124. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2124 by Assemblymember Eduardo Garcia and others in after to water making an appropriation therefore. Mr. Garcia, you may open. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, AB 2124 does not offer a prize but it does bring safe, clean drinking water to schools in California. Uh, this bill it strides to address what is a 25% estimate that has been made that schools do not provide free, fresh drinking water to students during the school hours. Uh, the bill uh, has received bipartisan support, and uh, most recently a report has been uh, unveiled that within 2003 and 2014, there have been approximately uh, 1 million students throughout the state of California that have been impacted by uh, water systems not meeting our water quality standards. Um, I respectfully ask for a eye vote, and I want to thank my colleague from Palmdale, who is a joint author on this bill, and uh, once again, respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Mr. Lackey. Yeah, just real quickly, I think it's, uh, it's a sad reflection of our infrastructure when we have over a million students that have to worry about something as basic as clean drinking water. This helps address that, uh, 
very important issue, and I don't think there's anybody in this room that ever had to worry about this going through school, and our kids deserve better, so I ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Lackey. Seeing no additional discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie about I-66, no zero measure passes. File item 172, AB 2137. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2137 by Assemblymember Santiago and actually a post-secondary education. Mr. Santiago. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, AB 2137 requests reporting from the UC related to transfer between community colleges in the UC. This bill will help the legislature track the UC on its efforts to strengthen and simplify transfers. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Ms. Santiago. Seeing no discussion on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote. I-63, no zero measure passes. File item 174, pass and retain. File item 175, AB, AB 2175. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2175 by Assemblymember Jones, and actually in fuel taxes. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, it is my honor today to uh, present AB 2175. In 2010, when some of us first got here, the state's budget was in a free fall. And in order to help balance the general fund budget, this legislature and the governor diverted $10 million per year from the off-highway vehicle trust fund to the general fund with the promise that the diversion would last no more than two years. This was not a loan. It was a simple diversion with no promise of ever repaying the money. Now, six years later, I'm bringing you AB 2175 to make good on the promise to stop the diversion. We are not asking that all the money taken from the fund be returned. We are simply asking that the taking stop. The off-highway trust fund comes from the off-highway vehicle enthusiasts through their permit fees, and through fuel taxes on the fuel when they are uh, operating off-highway. Grants from this fund are used to provide planning, acquiring, and maintenance of OHV areas, as well as for law enforcement, safety programs, and restoration of habitat and soil disturbance use, caused by OHV use. In fact, this program has now been in place for 45 years and is considered a model for other states, many of which have created their own programs using California's uh, as an example. Let's make good on our promise and allow the $10 million to remain in the Off-Highway Vehicle Trust Fund as intended. I ask for your aye vote. Mr. Cooley, you are recognized. Colleagues, I rise in support of this bill. I have the Prairie City Off-Highway Vehicle uh, site in my assembly district. Just had one of the big national events just a Saturday before last, drawing thousands and thousands of folks. And I appreciate my uh, colleague from San Diego in bringing this forward. Thank you, Ms. Cooley. See no discussion, additional discussion on the item. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote I-64, no zero. Measure passes. File item 176, AB 2206. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2206 by Assembly Member Williams, and actually in biomethane. Mr. Williams. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, uh, 2206 will provide the CPUC with the necessary information to review and revisit pipeline standards for biomethane. Uh, in 2014, the PUC adopted standards for pipeline quality bio biomethane. Most biogas producers supported the public health-focused standards, but raised concerns re regarding two other non-health-based standards as needlessly restrictive. And of course, since those standards have been made not one new biogas um, project has been hooked into the pipeline. This directs the PUC to co contract with the California Council on Science and Technology to analyze the non-health-based specifications so that new information might be used to revisit the standards in a manner that is both safe and cost-effective. 
I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie. The vote I 61 no zero measure passes. File item 177, AB 2216. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2216 by Assemblymember Bonta and actually to health workforce development. Mr. Bonta. Thank you. Mr. Speaker and members, AB 2216 will help address California's primary care provider shortage by creating a new state fund to sustain California's current teaching health centers and also establish new teaching health center sites. Right now, members, we have a primary care shortage, and this bill helps take a significant step in the right direction by addressing that shortage. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Bonta. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie. The vote is 58 no zero. Measure passes.